Hey everybody, so in this video, I just wanted to talk about AMD's most recent quarter. Now, um, here we can see clearly from uh, this little chart right here, they're saying uh, we saw record revenue growth of 6.6 .6 billion, which grew 70% year over year. So they're comparing to Q2 of 2021, and um, this grew 70%. Now, uh, let's take a look at the um, total year guidance. We're going to scroll down here a little bit. So here we can see um, the full fiscal year of 2022. They're saying that revenue growth or revenue could be uh, 26.3 billion plus or minus 300 million. So that is going to be a growth of 60% year over year. Now I kind of have a beef with this and um, I'm going to explain why in this PowerPoint presentation for you all. So I'm going to go ahead, pull that up. Uh, let's do a little slideshow here from the beginning. Let's see. And then from here, swap that out. So um, this is AMD revenue growth clarification. So there's a big problem here. And the problem is that AMD is providing us revenue highlights, but you know, it's highly misleading. So in 2022, they actually acquired this company called uh, Xilinx. And uh, this company, you know, it's bringing them in quite a bit of revenue. So this revenue is showing up in Q1 of 2022. It also showed up this quarter. So um, it's going to show up for the rest of the entire year of 2022. So the problem is that in 2021, you know, they didn't have Xilinx. So their 2021 revenues are much, much smaller because they don't have that Xilinx revenue. So what we're actually comparing is 2022 revenue with Xilinx to 2021 revenue without Xilinx. So of course revenue growth is going to look tremendous. I mean, do you guys see the dilemma? So now this uh, brings up an issue when we go into 2023 you know, obviously we're going to have that Xilinx revenue, but we're going to be comparing our numbers to 2022 when we had a full year of Xilinx revenue. So uh, let's just actually go over what Xilinx Q1 revenue was. So uh, for Q1 of 2022, they reported $559 million in revenue. So uh, that's pretty significant. If we're looking at their total revenue, um, it was five billion eight hundred and eighty-seven million. So obviously, you know, five hundred fifty-nine million. That's quite a bit. That's um, that's like ten percent right there. Uh, let's take a look at Xilinx Q2 revenue. So here, um, you know, they kind of reformatted the section. And uh, they're putting that net revenue from Xilinx under the embedded um, segmented revenue. So here we can see that they actually brought in uh, 1.257 billion. Um, and that's actually a accounting for quite a bit of their total revenue, which we can see right here is um, 6,550. So yeah, that's clearly a big chunk of that. So um, here's that 2022 uh, full year revenue guidance again. So uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get this number right here. We're going to take away 300 million. So that's 26 billion. We're going to add 300 million. That's uh, 26.6 billion. And then we're going to um, actually take out the Xilinx revenue. And uh, we're kind of going to make some rough estimations. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next slide here. So let's just make these assumptions, okay? Um, let's assume that the next two quarters for uh, Xilinx is going to be about the same in uh, revenue. So we're looking at a full year of Xilinx revenue to be right about 4.32 billion. So this is an estimation and it's probably a really rough one. Now they told us that the low revenue is going to be 26 billion to 
$1.6 billion on the high side for the full year of 2022. So uh, we take out the Xilinx revenue, and that's going to give us um, full year revenue of $21.68 billion to $22.28 billion. So 2021's uh, full year revenue was $16.43 billion. Now, without the Xilinx revenue, it's about 32 to 35.6% revenue growth. So I just want you guys to know that, you know, in that guidance, they were saying like, uh, let's go back. They are saying 60% year over year, but, you know, that's that's very misleading. We're probably looking something closer to uh, that 30% range, which I calculated right here. So now we actually have to do uh, earnings per share recalculation for uh, Q1 and Q2 because we have these um, items that are actually related to acquisitions. So um, as you can see here, we have this amortization of acquisition related intangibles. So this is showing up as an expense right here, an expense right here. But because you know these are more one-off um, expenses, we can actually go ahead and we add them back in. So when we do add them back in, you know, our income tax is going to be different. So right here, I'm assuming uh, income tax rate of about 12.61%. So when I do uh, add these back in, I get an operating uh, income of 1,375,000,000. So, um, with my tax, I'm going to get a 173.4 million in tax. So that's going to give me net income of um, 1.2 billion ish. And uh, when we actually divide by the diluted shares outstanding, that's going to give us diluted earnings per share of uh, 85 cents. So we go ahead, we do the same exact thing for Q2. And I'm assuming the same uh, taxation of 12.61%. So when I go through, I do all the math. That gives me diluted earnings per share of 81 cents. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, earnings per share comparisons. So for 2021, uh, Q1, we saw 45 cents, Q2, 58 cents, Q3, 75 cents, Q4, 79. Here in 2022, we have 85 cents. For Q1, 81 cents for Q2. Now, if I'm going to calculate trailing 12 months, I'm going to get Q3, Q4, Q1, and Q2 right here. So 2021, Q3, Q4, 75 cents, 79 cents. Uh, 2022, Q1, Q2, 85 cents, 81 cents. Trailing 12 months, we're going to add all of these together. That's uh, $3.20. Share price is $99.29. Price to earnings, that is 31. So, um, you know, I'm not as familiar with AMD. I will completely admit this. I am more or less looking at their financials and I'm trying to uh, let you guys understand that their highlights are totally total bogus. So, as far as 31 PE, it's a little bit hard for me to say, you know, is this a little bit expensive or is it still cheap? Because obviously, you know, people are paying higher multiples right now because they're seeing this growth. And, you know, as we calculate it, it's about 30% uh, growth. So um, generally, I do not want to be paying uh, higher premiums right now, just given the state of the economy and where we're at. So for me, you know, I would want something like 25 PE. You know, I would want this to be probably around like 75 to $80. And then maybe, you know, I would think, oh, okay, it's okay priced. But right now, you know, personally, just given the macroeconomics, um, I'm, I'm not quite feeling this uh, $99 share price. So that's essentially my take on uh, AMD just kind of some of the revenue metrics. I wanted to make sure that you guys understood what's actually going on here. So um, hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one.